Why are we both well wearing velvet? Like, what is happening right here? What were we giving together? It was magnificent. You know velvet, you wore it, you still wear it. Hey everybody, this is Dawn Richard, and you are tuned into how it was and how it is. Me, how it was. What was I thinking in this colorful, frou frou pink dress? And who do I think I am with these crossed legs at the age of, the tender age of two or three? Um, this is me as a kid in New Orleans. Uh, my mom loved pink uh, and I hated it. And so she said, yes, so let's do more pink, as in bows and froofy tool. That's, what, that's what's happening here. And then this is me, and I think this is me naturally in this tube top with my chest that still look the same as I age today. It's as if my chest decided to stay the same. <laughs> Thank you, mom. And um, yeah, these is, this is me as how I was. So I went from this and then it got interesting. So <laughs> black and velvet, cause yes, why not? Uh, this was my first homecoming uh, and my mom, believe it or not, I, my first date when I didn't have my parents coming to the date was my senior year. So all my dates were with my parents. I'm sorry, ex-boyfriends. I wore this uh, to my first homecoming and my mom dressed me for everyone and she hated this dress because it was black and she thought it was a bit too dressy and too old for me. So I loved it. And that's kind of how my entire trajectory of high school went. I went from pink to first concert being Green Day, watching anime, shopping at Hot Topic because yes, obviously, and black velvet with barrel curls because New Orleans stand up. So this was a photo shoot that I did for my latest album. And I honestly, I uh, did a love letter to New Orleans with my album and I think I came full circle because when I found these pants, it made me think of the frilly dress that I wore when I was two years old with the pink ribbons and I thought mom would be so proud that now I'm wearing black but also pink. See how we made that work to teamwork, mom. This is what you work so hard for. All those bills to come to this moment where I'm wearing both what I like and what you like. Full circle, mom. Aren't you proud? Okay, so this is one of my favorite pictures. This is who I really am. You know, it's this new, it's like a, a mix between robot meets I don't really care what you think of me. I am exactly who I wanna be. And uh, I don't know if my mom would love this, <laughs> But um, it is definitely who I am. I think she had a lot to do with it. And the little girl in, in um, Tool is now this girl in armor. Who knew? I did, I knew since I was one that I would be in armor. I knew it. Flexible, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Um, it's Debbie Richard's Dancing Schools of Gymnastics and Dance. That's a very long name, Mom. What were you thinking? Couldn't we just say Academy or Dance Academy? Or... And this was gymnastics class we were taking. So again, it evolved. I could back handspring, back tuck. I just learned everything through the art of dance from hip hop, jazz, ballet, tap to gymnastics. And you could tell I loved it. My mom was awesome, she was an awesome teacher. And literally after school, out of the other 18 things we were doing, my brother and I lived in this because my mom was a small business owner. She owned a dancing school. And so we did the books, inventory, but we also danced in it. I loved it, I was fly. I mean, my curls were magnificent. My split was raging amazing. I was wicked beautiful. Like, look at this, Ugh. obviously. I wish I could straddle like this now. Because I was a dancer, um, being the broke college student that we all know ourselves to be, thanks school for the loans, I wound up going to college for marine biology, actually, and minoring in marketing, but I had no money. So I needed a job and I happened to dance. I've been dancing my whole life. 
I could sing too, and I wanted to sing the national anthem, I will never forget this, um, at the basketball games, and you had to know somebody. They would not They would not pick anyone just off. They said auditions, but really it was Joe's cousin, auntie, that was what, the political. So I came up with a really nifty plan because it's me. And um, I could dance. So I tried out for the dance team, made it. And then I uh, got to sing the national anthem in time I wanted. Smart deal, right? Three years and a co-captain later, I danced for the New Orleans Hornets, which is now the Pelicans. Uh, and I did that for three years, uh, all because a kid could dance. And I loved it. And it paid bills. They paid us t like $50 a game. It was no money, but I loved it. And we got free tickets and my parents was in the front row like, and we got to watch the game and it was awesome. I loved every minute of dancing in the NBA. It was the reason I tried out for making the band. I kid you not, the girls were watching a show. They said, Dawn, you sing, you should try out for this show. And I said, nobody from New Orleans ever makes a television show. Nobody was on TV. I got in the line and my life changed. New Orleans Hornets. These became the first true sisters and friends that kind of stuck with me for years. Um, and this group is called Danity Kane. Uh, and it was kind of the first time I went from having girls that I competed against to becoming staples in my lives. Like literally, I think we know, we've had more time together than actual partners in relationships. That's the true thing. And that became my first collaborative situation. And really, I think, D dancing in the NBA and being around 21 girls, because yes, it was 21 girls who alternated, it prepared me for this entire journey. And uh, not only was it the most interesting friendship, it was televised, so the whole world got to see us grow um, as friends too. One of the most unorthodox friendships I've ever been a part of, because a mic pack, a mic, a camera, and an album, Friendship, wild. You guys saw it all. Next friendship comes really interesting enough. My boss became my group member. And I also made a new sister, Kalina Harper. And this will also go down as one of the most incredible uh, projects I've ever done. Again, a different relationship. The coolest thing ever, I got to do an art that I really loved and made some of the coolest music I've ever made. Three years of being locked in a studio with countless uh, hours of working. Coolest thing. Am I still in touch with these folks? I like, spoke to Puff like not too long ago. He's, I don't know what his name is today. He has 75 names. Um, and I've spoken to Kalina not too long ago too. I think these people are awesome. Puff, don't call me on FaceTime. Like, text first because everybody don't want to answer the phone immediately and see if, what if I don't got no makeup on? It's too much. I don't think he gets that, but that's, he's, you know, when you're rich and sh you don't know, you just do things because you, you rich and you expect everybody to. Boom, dirty money. So in a nutshell, guys, uh, how it was to how it is, this explains me to a T. Uh, I have had one of the most unconventional careers, I think, of anyone in the industry. From going to mainstream to underground, I think most people go underground to mainstream. Uh, being a girl signed to Bad Boy Records then to being signed to Merge Records, which is an alternative rock label. I don't know how many people that can say they were signed to Diddy and a label that signed to Destroyer at the same time. Pretty cool. Um, and I think, in essence, that kind of shows this, right? A girl with big dreams in pink and tool with so much sass to a girl in armor, ready and built to, you know, be ready for anything. I think uh, as a black woman, I knew that I wanted to break ceilings. And that's exactly what I did. Thank y'all for coming uh, to how it was, how it is, and oh, it's gonna go further than that. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, y'all can't stay, you gotta get out. But before you go, know that y'all could come back now, you hear? That's very New Orleans, and we love you. Les les bon temps roulé.